Hello, welcome to Biograd TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Queen Rana Valona III, Madagascar's ruler who fought against colonialism. By the beginning of the 19th century, Madagascar had an established monarchy and was developing quite rapidly as a sovereign nation. But as with most of Africa, Europeans had eyes on the kingdom, the French specifically. The ruler they had to fight to take over the kingdom was none other than the young queen Ranavalona III, who was the ruler of Madagascar at the time and became the last monarch to rule the island nation. Ranavalona III was born Princess Razafindra Haiti on the 22nd of November 1861. As a young child, her aunt, Queen Rana Valona II, took custody of her and arranged for her to begin receiving a private education from a London Missionary Society LMS teacher. She continued her education throughout her adolescent years. As a young woman, Razafindra Haiti married a nobleman named Ratrimo. Ratrimo later died, leaving the young princess widowed at just 22. It was said he was poisoned by the Prime Minister Rainilaya Rivoni so that being the most eligible candidate for the throne, she would be free to marry him as the Prime Minister, which was the custom at the time. When Queen Ranavalona II died, Razafindra Haiti was proclaimed queen and was given the title Her Majesty Ranavalona III by the grace of God and the will of the people, Queen of Madagascar and protectoress of the laws of the nation. Her coronation happened on the 22nd of November, 1883. Ranavalona entered a political marriage with Prime Minister Rainilaya Rivoni, just like her two predecessors. With this arrangement, her position as queen was more or less ceremonial as nearly all the crucial political decisions were left for the much older and more experienced prime minister. She, however, made many public speeches and commissioned new public buildings. As queen of Madagascar, Ranavaluna III became unavoidably involved in the political tension that had been existing between Madagascar and France since the beginning of the 19th century. The tension had grown stronger three years before she began to reign as queen. Some territories of the kingdom had come under attack by French forces who sought to make Madagascar their colony. All the while, Madagascar continued to negotiate with the French for some kind of agreement, but these were not making any headway as both sides were not willing to yield on key points of contention. After two years of deadlock, the French sent an ultimatum to the Queen in December 1885 to accept their claim over northeastern Madagascar, along with some other terms. This peace treaty was consented to by Rana Valona and Raini Laiarivoni in January 1886 and French government. But some aspects of the term were not made clear to the rulers of Madagascar, which when they discovered, led to fresh conflicts as the terms seemed to interfere on the Queen's sovereignty. While the British recognized French authority over Madagascar, the United States and Germany continued to deal directly with the Queen as the recognized authority. When the French sent an official to persuade the Queen and her Prime Minister to accept all the terms of the treaty and submit to French authority or risk war, the offer was rejected flatly. This led to an official breaking off of diplomatic relations between France and Madagascar in November 1894. The French immediately went on to attack and occupy the harbor of Tuamasina the following month and from there began a gradual advance towards the capital Antananarivo. 
of the 15,000 French troops that set out, more than 6,000 had died of diseases by May. Reinforcement had to come in from neighboring French colonies. The troop eventually arrived in the capital in September 1895. The fighting began immediately and for three days the Malagasy army was able to prevent the French troops from gaining access into the city. But as French bombardment increased, targeting the royal palace, Ranavalona had no choice but to surrender to the French. Queen Ranavalona was subsequently exiled from Madagascar on the 27th of February, 1897, and the century-old monarchical system was officially abolished the next day. The queen left the city with about 800 escorts and boarded a ship headed for Reunion Island, where she would spend two years in exile. The French feared that Reunion was not so far away from Madagascar and believing that somehow, loyalists of the queen might start a rebellion and try to get the queen back, they moved her further away to Algiers, Algeria. While in exile in Algiers, she was allowed to pay several visits to France where she became highly popular with the French people and the press who always wrote about her. Rana Valona made two formal requests to the French to allow her visit Madagascar but both were denied, giving the excuse of low funds in the colonial treasury. The queen therefore spent the rest of her life without ever visiting her homeland. She died on the 23rd of May 1917 in her villa in Algiers and was buried at the St. Eugene Cemetery in Algiers. Her funeral was well attended by personal friends, admirers and dignitaries. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.